G'day and welcome back for more Space Engineers Survival. And there was something very, very weird spotted by a few eagle-eyed people in the last episode. And here's a little clip of that. You can kind of see a small object moving upwards across the screen that looks very much like an engineer. I have no idea how on earth that happened. I have a world that has a maximum of two players in it. I was using my character to mine while that was going on, and I was using Reginald to record the perspective that saw it. And Reginald was sitting here the whole time. Hmm. I didn't think there was a clan ghost, but maybe I do now. And Reginald shouldn't be able to move because it was in F8 spectator, so I can't move his point of view. Well, I can't move him. I can move his point of view. I have a mouse on my desk so that I can move his camera around if I need to without having to get up and go over to the PC that he's running on. But, hmm. Very, very strange. I, don't, I, I cannot explain how that happened. It is the weirdest thing I have ever seen. My world has only two players. I, I no one can. Uh, I, yeah, flummoxed. That's a good word, flummoxed. And I really wish I knew why the music wouldn't play for the elevator all the time. <sighs> I'm gonna fix up something that I was supposed to fix up a little while ago, and that is right here. When I ground out the previous temporary connector for the goose, I forgot to place this block back in. So let's fix that, and there we go. All fixed now. Good. So today is meant to be the day where I start designing the turntable for the goose so that we don't have to reverse around or do any 5 billion point turns in order to get the goose back out of the hangar. This construction is going to be enormous. If you think the hangar is big now, when this is done, it is going to look minuscule by comparison, mostly. What I plan on doing is expanding the hangar down this way by about another section's depth and then having our roundhouse style storage for all of the trailers. And they will come off a turntable. The turntable needs to be long enough to fit the entire goose and its trailer and potentially a little bit of extra space just in case one of the other trailers ends up being a little bit longer. Because that is certainly a possibility. What I also want to do is have multiple parking spots. So I'll have one going off to that side, one going off on the diagonal, straight, diagonal and straight. So there'll be five trailer parking spots. If I manage to fill those up, I will redesign the turntables so that it could go up and down on a piston, but I'm not expecting to need quite that much room. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I will get excited and build that many, but I think at the moment we'll just keep it calm. <laughs> Plan for five, since I've only got one at the moment, five may even be excessive anyway. What I'm going to do for the build, though, is do things a little bit differently. Normally when I'm doing a build session, I show you pretty much everything from my point of view and I might do a little bit of a time lapse. The trouble is, this design is going to take me a long time to put together and I'm going to be working at night at times. So I need to get a bit more light on the situation, but I'm also going to do something new or a little bit different, and hopefully it'll help out with making certain parts a bit clearer as to how they go together. And that is using Reggie. Reginald's point of view, if I go into the F8 spectator camera, the light from that is not visible on my point of view. It's just for him. So I can use that to illuminate the area more broadly from his point of view without it actually making it any easier for me. What I can also do is go and grab the tick and the butterball and put them in positions where their spotlights 
will shine down on what we're doing. I could possibly even build some lights out there, but I think this will probably be enough. So let's first put the tick in position, and I'm also going to take advantage of the fact that the tick currently has in its inventory, and I haven't named its cargo containers yet, but this one. It's got a few interior plates, steel plates. I should probably get some girders and things and put them in there as well. And that'll be helpful because there's so many blocks I'm going to place down that I need to have all of those extras without having to fly back into the hangar all the time. Hopefully this will give us enough range. We've got 12 hours of power, so we'll be alright for quite a while. That gives us a bit more light. And let's get the butterball and see if it can be more useful in terms of illumination. Could probably even bring the goose out there for extra if I really want to. But... I don't think I'll do that. What is that thunking? Oh man. There's no moving parts on this. It shouldn't have thunks. Alright, let's turn off the thrusters. Oh yeah, that's alright. We'll see if that gives us a bit more illumination as well. Oh, I should have checked how much power it had left. Ah, 41 days. Fine. Very, very fine. Okay. With the sun starting to come up, I should probably get Reggie ready so that we can start building. I'm also going to grind down all of this eventually, before I actually use this blueprint, but... For the moment, I'll leave it here so I can grind off bits as I want them for placing down new parts, since... It's kind of a nice little storage of the things that I need. I bet you're the one making the clanging noises, aren't you? Aren't you? Alright, jumping to Reggie's point of view. Now, there is something I did to Reggie last time that will need to be fixed. We need to go into Options, Graphics, and change the field of view. When I'm setting up camera positions, I often reduce the field of view to get a particular angle that I want with a shallower, a narrower field of view. It tends to look a bit nicer, there's none of those distortions on the edge, but moving around with a very narrow field of view tends to also make people more motion sick. So while it's great for clever camera angles and machinima and things like that, it's terrible for playing the game and it's something that I learnt when I first started doing tutorials because my field of view I think was set at like 45 degrees for some of those first few videos. I didn't notice because I've gotten so used to it, but a lot of people found it off-putting. So I try and pay attention to it these days. And with Reggie's camera setup, you can see that his light that he sees, I do not see, which is really kind of handy. Those thuds are very, very loud. I really wish I knew what was causing them. Okay, so we got the right color. Let's start placing down some blocks. I'm going to do this one in a way that's a bit different to the previous ones. I'm actually not going to lay out the floor first. There's a lot of shapes and a lot of complex shapes that I need to get in before I start adding in any details. And if you haven't guessed, this is going to take me quite a while. So, first off, what I need to do is... We're going to have a bit of a diagonal coming out each side to start opening up this space. The general shape I'm going for here is going to be a slightly squished on one side, almost octagonal shape. So these two diagonal edges are going to be shorter because I don't want all of the parking bays coming off this to be as large as this. It's too big. I want to make them a bit smaller so that it feels purpose designed. And what we're going to do is have probably, I'll go with, I think the shape I worked out was three there. Then we go up and have a pillar here. So we go with that. Then this first little bay is going to be, this first little bay is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wide. And then we'll have another post here. The next bay is one of our diagonal ones. 
these are always more difficult to design and are also why I'm going to have to limit the amount of interior wall blocks I use because we don't have any angled version of, versions of them in vanilla. There are some mods that add angled versions and I really wish I knew what that clanging was. It's very off-putting. Is it you? I wonder if it goes away now that I've turned the dampers off. I had thought they were off, but... Oh well. We'll see. No! Rats! There's, <laughs> there's no situation. Uh, the sound isn't working to tell me where that's coming from. Oh! Well, that explains it. I may have fixed the tick, but I have not fixed this. Uh... Oh, it stopped. Okay. Alright, well, I thought I'd fixed the situation with those two and their vector thrusts, but apparently not. We will need to continue to think about how we can avoid this particular problem. Anyway, back to the design, now that I don't get constant distractions from the dung, dung, dung thud noise that was driving me crazy. Okay, so... If we've got eight across here, something that'll be about the same width will be if we go with five diagonal blocks across here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and then pillar. Then we'll go the other side and then whatever's left will be the gap between the two posts there. So we've got a gap of three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Gets us up to the right height. Then we go with seven gap across here. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven. Then up. And you're probably starting to get an idea of just how big this thing is. Then we go with another five across here. One, two, three, Four, five. So you can see what I meant about the sort of squashed octagon. Kind of works. And it'll mean that each bay, if we look from down here, each bay will look about the right size. They are slightly different. That's seven, that's eight, that's five diagonally. But they look similar enough that I think it passes. So those are going to be our bays. Now, we need to work out a little bit of the floor and how we're going to fit a rotor to spin the turntable that's centered. Unfortunately, this is 12 blocks across. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That means that Anything I try to put in the middle is going to be one block either side of it. So I'm actually going to do something purely for aesthetics, big surprise, so that we can get the rotor dead center. I'm actually going to put the rotor on a piston. I'm going to do this because I think it will make it look so much better having the rotor dead center of this area. And to do that, I need to have a bit of a space and a bit of vertical room. Now, I think I will have the rotor mounted on this row here. So I'm going to bring it out just to make my life easier so I know where I'm lining up to. And so that's that one over here. Okay. What I need is the rotor to sit at this level, having one block of gap and then having the piston down here so that I can hide the piston a little bit. So if we do this, where's a piston? There's a piston somewhere in here. I know there is, there it is. Place a piston like that. Then we grab our blast door blocks. There's no advantage here in using conveyor tubes since this turntable is never going to have conveyor tubes on it. it just would not work at all with what I've got planned. 
I'm only placing these blocks down so that you guys can see what is going to happen. We're going to have to rebuild them again because of this being a blueprint eventually and being projected, this won't work. So then the rotor is going to sit on here like that. If I was ever to do an expansion, I can go down because I can just move, remove all of this lift, cut down and have a piston going across and then having some pistons pushing it up. And I could cut a hole in the floor so that the lift could actually go through. But as I said, I'm only expecting I will need space for five trailers, at least for the moment. Hopefully this isn't like every time I buy a new hard drive and I think, yeah, this will last me for ages. And it doesn't. It really, really doesn't. So, around this rotor, I'm going to create a little bit of a hole in the floor. The rotor is actually going to line up over halfway between these two, I think. Did I do that right? Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. That. Those two. No, I put it one too far. Okay, it's going to line up between these two and the piston should be across. Dang it. I really hope I counted that right since I just ground that straight off. Where is the halfway point? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that is on the halfway point. So this does need to go back another block. Alright, back to the piston and all that jazz and do it all again. The reason I wanted to use those blast doors there is that I can then have a nice small hole in the floor for this to go in and I need more plates because I am using a lot of them. I am also down to one hydrogen bottle so I should fill that up very soon. So I can make a tiny hole like this by setting it up that way and then, then there'll only be half a block on either side. And I think it looks a lot neater that way than if I had the piston up at this level and having it visible. I kind of wanted to hide it. Although, ultimately, I suspect the turntable completely hides all of this anyway. But I will want to build an access way to get into the mechanism. So they'll be probably coming from... Maybe coming from the side. Because the side can be dead centred. I haven't worked out how to do the passageway access way thingies but for this what I want to do is place those down like that create a nice three by four hole in the ground so we'll just build this up around and then do a tiny bit of styling on the hole so that'll be the size of it then we can put a couple of little slopes in each corner. There we go. Easy. Not sure what I'll do underneath, but I will design something down there soon. Maybe we'll just make this a nice empty cube for the time being. Make it easy to drill this out. Because this is also going to be my giant drilling guide. And when I say giant drilling guide, I don't mean that the drilling guide is any bigger than it needs to be, but this is going to be a huge drilling effort when it's done. I'm going to place down blocks for the floor all across here, and I'm just placing armor down for the time being. As I said, I think this is going to be a bit of a challenge to design the floor for, but I'm, I am going to try and design it on this blueprint before we place it down. So we've got the giant floor now. And an extra block for some reason. Now it's time to talk about one of the challenges this is going to face. And that is designing on diagonals. Because these bays are going to need to come out from these corners straight from them, I'm kind of limited in what blocks I can use. We've got armor blocks that can sort of work for this, but it's going to be a little bit iffy. What I'm going to do is first start here. And I want to... Oh no! 
Oh no, Splitzy, what have you done? <gasps> no. I've lined this up wrong. That is interior wall. I should have an extra line of blocks here. Uh, bugger. 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 Alright. I think I know how I can get around this. I'm going to keep going with this design and pretend that these are armor blocks. What I can then do is use the blueprint of the hallway section, place it in, drill it in, get all the blocks set up, then project this with these lined up over where the arm blocks would end up being. Because redoing all of this... But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to live with this. I'm going to live with this stuff up and just keep going. Dang it! Ah, why did I do that? So silly. So what we're going to do is, pretending this is the other block, we're going to come across diagonally from here. It should line up fairly nicely onto there. Yeah, excellent. Then, from there, we're going to continue this line around with these slopes across this way. And now, for the fun of diagonal design. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with one of these corners. Do a similar thing again like we had before. And do this diagonal this way. Should line up nicely again. Yep, excellent. And now, for the back side of this, I'm actually going to do this back edge a little differently. We're going to use these. Like so. So from underneath, it'll mostly look like diagonal blocks. But from the front, it'll have that sloped edge, which we're going to continue around the whole turntable area. But what I also want to do is, and I'll demonstrate this on the square one first, have our lines that go down the bays like we have in the rest of the hangar. So that this feels like part of the same design. And we're going to need to do those sorts of lines down these. Which means I think what we'll do is come off here. Which is also here. Put a square block in there. And then put some slopes on like this. So you can see that that's going to come down and those lines will follow down toward the back of this bay. Which should look similar enough. But you can also see here why I'm going with full blocks for the other bays. Because if I didn't use full blocks here, where I've in the past used half blocks, I would end up with a, a very obvious difference between these diagonal bays and these square bays. So for these ones, I'm actually not going to differentiate strongly between the cross beams and the longer lines that go all the way down to the back. So what I'm going to do is about five or six. Go six. And then we'll go have a cross bar across here. Just then go down to the ground. Bar across here. And then we'll continue this another five blocks back. Oops. Then at the fifth, I think that's probably about far. Yeah. We'll have a crossbar. And we'll then come out two more blocks and then down. So you can see how this is similar to the designs in the other sections of the hangar. And now, to create something that looks vaguely like that over here. Well, this gets tricky. We've got one, two, three, four, five. 
That does not look anywhere near as far as the other, so I think we'll probably go with eight, and then we need to have a square. And I'll show you why we need to have a square. That's because if we're going to match the other one, we need to have a crossbeam here. Uh, yep, that's as far as I want to go with that. Then that, that, that. Square. And I need a square one there as well, which means I need one here. The reason I need a square one there is to continue this line down, I have to come off from here. That is not the right slope. There we go. And you can kind of see where I'm going with this idea. We know we've got the limitations of how we can work with diagonals. So we just try and build the rest of the design so that the diagonals don't look out of place. Work within, Working within what we can. And now we've got a problem. It's going to look different for this part regardless now. Because if I just come straight down from here, it's not really going to look square. So I'm actually going to do this one a little bit more differently. We go one, two, three, then down. And the reason I've gone with three is that all of these rear pillars are going to have the slopes. And I find that if I put the slope here, it just doesn't look quite as good. And it doesn't feel like it creates the same open space. So I'm just going to stick with that and I think it looks alright. Or I think it will look alright. So one, two, three, and down. But if we have a look at these parts, you can see now the rough shape this is going to take. I'll be building a bay identical to that on the other side and identical to that on that side. And then this one is just going to be one block wider than these bays. And come on, go down, stinging adversary. I see smoke. I think it's going down. Oh, I see stuff falling off it. Oh yeah, it's going down. It's going down hard. Very hard. Yep. <laughs> There's not much left of that one. Alright. So I'm going to quickly use Reggie's point of view as a time lapse while I place down these other bays in the same pattern as we've got already. For this part, it'll be the same idea. The slopes across here and then just one block wider than the other ones. Alrighty, let's get moving. One thing I missed on this design over here was the crossbeam across here. So we'll add that in. Like so. And now you can kind of get a better feel of why I've put the pillars out here where I did. Because now that that slope joins onto that part, it makes a bit more sense. I was wondering why it was looking a bit funny. There we go. And continue. And while I'm seeing that I missed that bit, I also missed putting the pillars out here. Uh, come on, Splitzy, get your head in the game. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Nice and simple, just like that. <sighs> I think that should be on a perfect diagonal from those rows there is what I'm aiming for so that they look like so that I can eventually figure out some magical way of creating a drilling guide between these there we go back to this one which is why I realized that I'd done that wrong and over here I've actually stuffed up my placement of these cubes so I'm going to need to place down a few extra bits so that when I grind this out the end doesn't fall off and same with when I grind this out there we go. Then I can take those bits off the top in a second. 
Ugh. All these stuff ups really cost me time. But I suppose it's useful to show you guys what I'm doing when I fix them. Even if sometimes I do fix them in strange ways. <coughs> Merge blocks. <coughs> um, yes. <laughs> anyway. Uh, that was an embarrassing day. <sighs> With these parts that are full cubes where in other parts of the hangar they are smaller, this is where I can definitely take advantage of the fact that parts of my scaffolding to date have been done in slightly darker greys. And I think you'll probably see the colour difference when I do them on these bits. A lot more than we normally do. But that's kind of a good thing because it'll, it'll be a nice way of continuing that pattern through to these even though the shapes are quite different. Okay, so I've placed all these parts. Now, unfortunately, this is where we've run into a bit of a multiplayer bug that I keep having when I'm doing these time lapses. If I move Reggie's point of view, you can see if I highlight in the center of the screen, those blocks are not there. Those blocks are most certainly here in my point of view. So I'm going to reload the server, which means we're going to have Reggie's camera in a slightly different place, which is unfortunate, but necessary for what we're doing. So I'll be back once I've done that reload. As a side note, the error that usually comes up when I rejoin, attempt to rejoin this with Reggie is the server zero bug, which is un, a well-known problem. So let's get that done so that we can still see what's going on from Reggie's point of view. And we're back. So I'm going to go with a different angle for Reggie this time, and you'll see why in a moment. So. One thing you might notice looking at each of these bays is we've got these two lines coming in from each one. And I might have mentioned earlier that I want to build a dome. It's going to be a slightly funny shaped dome and it's going to be incredibly hard to drill out. But this is how I think I'm going to do it. If we go from each of these straight ones, I don't think I'll be able to come up with a line and blocks that would work for the, di the diagonals, but I don't think we need them. I think it'll work with just the straight ones. So if we go from here, then go up, one, two, one, two. How far have I got? I've got, I think I probably just want to go with three. Then we go to two by one by one slopes. I'm just going to put these blocks in to make it easier to place them. And that, oh yeah, that's going to work perfectly. That lines up with that row. Yes. Okay, good. So we're going to do that on all of them. We'll go the three 45 degree slopes. And then we'll go two by one by ones. So these are our slopes. And you can see this will create a rough curve. It'll look a little bit rounded. And these edges should be roughly about the same across the middle as well, so it'll look like a nice round curve going from one side to the other, which is what I am after. Then we go with, from here, do the same thing. And I'm hoping I've got this right, that this is spaced out so that this will work. One, two, three, and then our two by ones. Oh, of course I run out of steel plate at this point. Rawr. Now, you don't have any left, but I'm going to ditch these because I don't need to carry them. Oh, I should probably get, hyd get some hydrogen anyway. No, the sun's setting. I want to get this bit in before the sun sets. Yeah. Come on, hurry, 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 hurry. I want you guys to be able to see this properly. Ice. That's not how you spell ice. Ice. Oh, I'm getting low on ice. I'm going to have to go mine some. And let's grab as many of those. Okay, quick, 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 before the sun sets, before the sun sets. Oh, no. Solar panels are getting close. All right. I want to show you this properly before it gets dark. Two by one by one. And lines up nicely. So we can do the same on this one. Because after we've done this bit, it's all about figuring out how to build the drill guides for all of these different weird shapes. And 
then designing the floor. So, you come across here. You come across there. You come across there. And I'll do that down to each side over here as well. So let's do that. I find that placing armor blocks like this and creating room for the 2 by one by one slopes makes it so much easier to do. I've never actually really done this before, creating the room for them when creating curves, but it is incredibly helpful. No, no, not sideways. All right. So those are our main curves. Now, you might notice that if we look at this diagonal, it's a lot shorter than this one. So this section here is shorter. So what I think we might be able to do uh, is, let's go from here. Let's start at this end. So we go with a two by one by one there. Then we just go with diagonals. I think that'll work. We'll see. Yes! Ha! Ah, works perfectly. So that will be our enormous dome. And I have never built a dome in Space Engineers before. This is the very first time. And I'm kind of excited about the idea. I think I might do more domes. Make an enormous spaceship with a dome. No, I'm really not going to do that. Not unless it's like some giant habitation ship. Cool. So a slightly wonky... It's almost like a ball halfway through bouncing dome sh Oh. Uh, I did this wrong. Let's fix that. I was hurrying too much and I wasn't paying attention to where I started. Arr. For those of you that were hoping I would do this as a space with an elevator, having parking spaces coming off all the other sides, hopefully the idea of a massive dome with rock exposed all the way around will make you go, oh yeah, this could actually look pretty cool. That's all right. I don't mind not having a massive elevator built here. Ah, <sighs> yeah. All right. So that is the dome. That is going to be epic when it is done. That is so high up. <laughs> I don't think that normal interior lights would work from up there. So this may be one of those spots where we will put a couple of spotlights in to make it look really dramatic. This is going to be fun. So now we need to design some extra little bits and pieces. I could, I guess, place the whole thing out, weld the whole thing out, and then start doing some of these design bits, like having the walkways in and stuff like that. In fact, what I might do, since I stuffed this up and we've got these interior walls here, is grind off them replace them with the light armor blocks that are supposed to be there. Just to make this a bit easier to see what's actually going on. It's really annoying that I did that. I am very frustrated by that. Let's put in our catwalks where they'll be. Oh dear. I think I've been building in gray since the reload. That's not gonna be good. Let's just make the whole thing white. Control, shift, middle mouse. Paints the entire grid white. My uh, <laughs> my performance is less than perfect at the moment, which is not surprising. Given the number of half, well, completely unwelded blocks that are here. Uh, yeah, I'm really not surprised that this is not performing as it normally does. I'm hoping to get rid of this whole thing and that will lighten the load dramatically and bring things back to where they usually sit in terms of performance for me. Okay, let's pop back up the top and let's see what we can do with these walkways. I'm I'm really not sure. Maybe... Uh, maybe 
this is a part where we go... Oh, actually, I think I've just thought of it. My big trouble was I didn't want to do this zigzagging pathway like this because it would look really awkward and it would be really horrible to walk through. Instead, what I think we'll do is we'll go out this way. And I'm going to need to drop some stuff in the tick. Otherwise, grinding this down, I'm going to start dropping more components. Let's ditch some of you. Okay, so what I'm going to do, coming from each of these, which continues down the whole way through the hangar, I'm going to go out all the way to the middle. There we go. So this will allow us access through to where the rotor and piston are, which is good. We should have service access. One and two. There we go. So that'll be nice. And we'll do the same on the other side. And I think that'll look nice and balanced for what we want. And I'm really, really anxious when I'm grinding this because I'm really worried that I won't, that I'm going to accidentally dry, grind off a whole chunk and have to rebuild the lot. That's why I'm doing it piece by piece. So there we go, that'll work. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to have stairways up from each of, for each of the bays. I think we're going to have to go with a pair of stairways, maybe one on each side. Some, And the reason I don't think we'll be able to do it for each one is I have no idea how I would get a stairway into this diagonal in a way that wouldn't either cause me to have to dig a huge chunk out of the wall because we'd go out that way or end up with a massive hole in the floor that gets in the way. So instead, let's use the area where we're actually not going to be driving pretty much ever. And that's going to be over here. So if I grind out... Maybe... Actually, maybe we should decide what to do with this wall first before I decide where to grind that out. I would like to have some interior wall blocks here. Like so. And probably do the same over here, actually. Then we could, just to add a bit of interest on these ones, do this and add a couple of slopes in here. That's not where I wanted that at all. So if we pop these in as a crossbar, that'll tell me where the rock wall is going to end up being, which means it'll probably be best if we have the stairs end at this one. So, if we go with catwalk open there, and then we go with... where's our stairs? Stairs in here. And a couple of people have mentioned that you can use stairs this way and walk up them. Yeah, that's kind of cool that you can do that, and it's a useful tip. But I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it because I just don't like the look of it at all. I'm going to keep using them the way that I feel they were intended. Rather than as slightly steep... as Rather than as very steep stairs, or slightly sloped ladders. I suppose Marek should have argued that. We do have ladders. Just put your stairs vertical. That's almost a ladder. Alright, I think the stairs down here should work reasonably well. We'll match that on the other side. They're going to be out of the way, which is perfect. Let's match that crossbar as well. Now, you've seen that I put a crossbar here. This is the only place in the entire build that there is a crossbar. I'm thinking of putting something like that in the other areas. I just haven't worked out in my head a way that I think will look good. And I do want it to look good. I want it to work into the rest of the design. So it's now getting pretty dark and I don't know that the spotlights from the other vehicles are helping all that much. It is pretty hard to see sometimes what's going on now which is unfortunate because there's not much more to do but there is a bit. Although 
If I've done that bit of the floor, I just need to do some replacement with interior wall blocks. That's actually not too bad. We pretty much got this done in a day. I was expecting to go over a couple of days doing this. All right, good. Good, good, good. Place the emissive strips on that side. Then there would be one there, but there's stairs. So then we'll go to here. Need it. Oh, of course. Of course. Never, ever, ever am I carrying what I want. So we'll have emissive strips tops running across there. And then running down this wall side of each of the bays. It's a bit easier to see on this side than the other side with its bit of stuff underground but the emissive strips will go all the way around the outside and then we'll continue them into the next bay and I think what we'll do is we'll come to the here come to the here come to here and let's grind some of this off so that we can get some interior plates back so I'll bring the interior walls out to here then bring it across here and now do I want to go on this row? I don't want to go on this row. I think maybe this one. My justification for that is I want these posts to be embedded in the rock, which means I'm going to be wanting to drill along this line so that they are still embedded in the rock. If I placed this in this row here, these will also be partially embedded in the rock too. And I don't want that. I want them to be completely out. So we'll go along here. So as previously mentioned, I've been using the full grid blocks because their textures line up. I know I could save a bit of iron with the, particularly with the size of this, by using half slabs. But with their textures not lining up, I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to stick with using these even though it's going to cost me a huge amount of iron to make all of this. Because aesthetics are important. To me. <laughs> Alright, we're getting there. Oh man, so many blocks to place. So, I think I have placed all the floor pretty much how I want it. It is very dark here so it is hard for you guys to see but I can make it out reasonably well. There's probably a few bits here and there that I've missed that I'll have to fit in later but I'm quite happy with how this has turned out. Haven't really shown you guys exactly what I'm going to be doing for the rotor here and the turntable but that will come once we've drilled out the hole and placed down the core blocks which is really just placed down the floor then I will show you exactly how this is going to work. And it's pretty simple. Basically, it's just catwalk blocks that go on top of that. You can drive straight on them really easily. It works well. What I am going to do, however, is I'm going to grind away all of this bit. I'm going to fix up this blueprint. And next time, we're going to come back and we're going to build in the drilling guides because I have not got a clue how to do that yet. These diagonal bits, uh, maybe I'll be able to use these diagonal railings. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to play around with how on earth I do a diagonal drilling guide because I do want this to be carefully drilled exactly where I would like. But that's all for next time. So there's that and a whole lot of drilling to come. So I'll see you then. Thank you.